the Los Angeles Lakers finally hit the panic button after losing in the first round of the playoffs this year by trading for Russell Westbrook from the Washington Wizards in exchange for Kyle Kuzma, KCP, and Montrez Harrell. Something that hasn't been getting talked enough about this Washington Wizards and Lakers deal is the fact that the Washington Wizards actually probably won this trade. Even though they gave up one of the better point guards still in the NBA today in Russell Westbrook, they ended up getting the three youngest players off the Los Angeles Lakers roster. And if you're the Wizards trying to get rid of somebody like Russell Westbrook who kind of didn't have that high of a trade value, getting the three youngest players on any team's roster is a major win. And I know Contavious Caldwell Pope is not really somebody that's looked at as a trade uh, trade asset. He really is in today's NBA. Contavious Caldwell Pope fits the perfect role of a 3 and D wing who is only going to take three-point shots. He's going to defend the other team's probably first or second best ball handling guard or wing player. And he still is a guy who can get up and down the floor with the rest of the team easily. Then you have Montrez Harrell, who probably is not going to be with the team very much longer. I don't know how many of you guys were watching the Washington Wizards last year, but they really had a good time running their own kind of three-center lineup when it came to Daniel Gafford, Robin Lopez, and Alex Len there at the five spot. Now, one or two of those guys is probably not going to be on the roster next year. That is obvious, but I don't know if the Wizards are really going to look at Montrez Harrell as the guy to play alongside probably Daniel Gafford for the foreseeable future. Then you have Kyle Kuzma. Now, Kyle Kuzma is in a really interesting position with this Washington Wizards team. If you remember, Kyle Kuzma was the best player on the Lakers a few years ago. Now, this was obviously before Anthony Davis got there, before LeBron James got there, before guys got to that Lakers team that actually made it a championship team. However, he still was the best player on the Los Angeles Lakers. That has to mean something for the Washington Wizards because they're trading for a guy in Kyle Kuzma who's not really the guy he was when he was playing alongside Anthony Davis and LeBron James. They're trading for the guy that was playing before those two guys got there. And I think playing alongside somebody like Bradley Beal will actually probably be the most incredible thing for Kyle Kuzma's career. I would not be surprised if he ends up scoring 20-plus points a game this upcoming season. And, you know, I want to just say something about Russell Westbrook. For the Wizards, a part of winning this trade is getting out of, you know, it's almost an addition by subtraction with Russell Westbrook. And I'm not talking about the talent level with Russell Westbrook. I'm not talking about his effort because both of those were probably the number one or number two he was probably the most talented guy on the team. He was probably the most hard-working guy on the team outside of Bradley Beal. With that being said, paying $44 million to a point guard in today's NBA who cannot shoot consistently from the three-point line will consistently take shots that are not very smart shots and will never really be a defensive, defensively capable guy at the most important position and most one of the more athletic positions in today's NBA. So now pivoting this to the Lakers and what exactly this means for their team. Obviously, they have Russell Westbrook. They have LeBron James. They have Anthony Davis. That's going to be 55 to 60 wins, almost guaranteed with how talented those three guards are playing together. It doesn't really matter that LeBron James is 36 and that Russell Westbrook is 32. They still have a 28-year-old Anthony Davis who's going to be an incredible threat down low. Yeah, he's probably going to miss 15 to 20 games, but I would not be surprised if he gets back to being an All-NBA player next year, especially after a year where he had big major or he had major injury questions around the entire season. And you never know what somebody like LeBron James, who when we see him be an incredibly locked in and focused guy. We've seen him do incredible things. I understand that he's 36, and some people are saying that this is the start of the decline for LeBron James. I don't really see it. I, I will only really believe it when I see that guy start not being able to dunk the ball, not being able to take a fast break in like three dribbles off of a rebound and dunk on two people's head. Like Once I see LeBron James not doing incredible things, I'll agree that you with you that he's taking a step back. But he's still doing incredible things at the age of 36. He probably has the best 
well-kept NBA body that we've ever seen in NBA history. He's one of the more athletic guys still in the NBA today. And he's starting to get a better jump shot from the post, from the three-point line. Even the free-throw numbers are starting to look better. So I think LeBron is probably going to have another incredible season. This trade, literally, you know, the trade was for Russell Westbrook. So obviously this next point is going to be obvious. This hinges on whether or not Russell Westbrook can be the third star in on a championship team. This hinges on that because right now, there are five active players on the roster for the Los Angeles Lakers. You have LeBron, you have Anthony Davis, you have Mark Gasol, you have Russell Westbrook. I can't count. That's only four players. They have four players on their active roster. I don't know if you guys know, but you need five players to field an NBA team. Like You need five guys on the court at all times, and they have four on their active roster. And one of those is Alfonso McKinney. I don't think he's going to play for them. If Alfonso McKinney is playing for the Lakers next year, I like that just signals how bad their roster is going to look. And now looking at it, it actually is five. I didn't see Marc Gasol, so I can't count, and I'm an idiot for thinking that, that I can't count. They have five. Now getting back to the point about this Russell Westbrook thing, I don't think that he really is going to just take a backseat. I understand that I saw some report that was like, oh, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James have agreed to set aside their egos and play together for a championship. Like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever read. You really think that that's going to happen? LeBron James is the biggest ego in today's NBA. He's one of the biggest egos in NBA history. Anthony Davis, I don't really think he has that big of an ego. He's kind of been a little bit more outspoken since he got to Los Angeles and you see him do more things, but I don't think he has an ego. And Russell Westbrook, he toned it down in Washington. I will give Russell Westbrook that. He seems like a changed, I wouldn't say a changed man because this is just basketball at the end of the day. I wouldn't say Russell Westbrook is a changed man, but something is, you know, some, something is less volatile with Russell Westbrook. Um, he was less volatile last year in Washington, is all I'll say. He was not as volatile as he has been in other locker rooms. And I really applaud Russell Westbrook for that. If he brings that to Los Angeles, then yeah, I, there's no problem with Russell Westbrook in terms of an ego. I think he, at this point in his career, is like when he says it's all about basketball and trying to win a championship, I actually believe Russell Westbrook at this point. So... I mean, I'm just going to put this out there now because I think it's probably in my best interest to just say it as early as possible so I can backtrack in, like, two weeks when the Lakers somehow add, like, Chris Paul and Devin Booker to this team, like, somehow. Um, if that happens, just cancel the season. Um, I don't think the Lakers are winning the championship next year. I really don't. After everything that I said that's positive about all these guys, about Anthony Davis, about LeBron, about Russell Westbrook, they have five players on their roster. And we've seen in NBA history, like if you look at the Golden State Warriors when they lost to the Toronto Raptors, there was a lot of turnover on that team. The only guys that were really carried over from the previous championships were Clay, Steph, KD, Draymond, Iguodala, and that maybe was the last year that Sean Livingston was there. They had six guys that they could count on. They had six. And we saw once two of those guys went down, when KD and when Clay went down, they fell apart. And some people are going to blame that on Steph Curry. You can't blame Steph Curry for having two guys that he's played in a finals with on the court with him at the same time. Only two. That's the biggest stage in basketball. He had two guys he was comfortable with on the court with him. And he played out of his mind in a couple of those games. I really see the same kind of thing happening for the Lakers. I would not be surprised if they got to the finals. But, it, like I said, it takes one of these guys to go down. It takes one Anthony Davis ankle injury. Or it takes one Russ hamstring injury. It takes one injury for this Lakers team to fall apart and for, for LeBron not to be able to carry them to where he wants. I wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers brought someone out of retirement. Just watch Kyle Korver come out of retirement for the Lakers. 
play in LA, play with LeBron, play with someone he's comfortable with, make one, two million dollars, shoot three or four threes a game, and have a front row seat to the Staples Center. I wouldn't be surprised if Kyle Corbett comes out of retirement. But this, like, that's how bad this team is going to be. Is they're going to be bringing Kyle Corbett out of retirement, and yeah, they're not winning the finals next year. I'm just gonna say that now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like. If you didn't, make sure you hit this like. Any feedback from you at this point is much appreciated. Uh, I'm trying to do this more often, so if you want to see more of my videos about football, basketball, cricket, hockey, bowling, whatever you want, just let me know in the comments. And make sure you hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.